Okay, this video is about the Laguna C Flux 1 dust collector. Uh, I'm going to talk here just about the assembly of the unit, how you put it together, the difficulties I had putting it together, and not uh, the performance. I may do something on that later after I get it up and uh, plugged in actually. So I bought this unit for three, three basic reasons. One, the dust collection bin is easy to remove and wheel around, it's on wheels. Number two, this is a cyclone collector, which I did not have before. And the other thing was the height. I don't have a lot of head space here in the basement in the shop, so I didn't want something that would bump into the ceiling and not fit here at all. So I bought that. So first, some general comments about the assembly. Um, the manual that comes with it was dated 2016, even though the date code on the system says 2919, which means it was manufactured probably in uh, late June or early July. So I went online and looked at the manual there, and that manual is dated 2018, two years later. So I was a little confused about why they had a later manual up on there uh, than the one I got with this unit when I just recently bought it. I don't know if they're planning to release it, uh, a, a later unit or not, but the manual's not exactly the same. The two manuals are slightly different. So that was the first problem I noticed with the manual. Uh, let's take a look at the manual and I'll show you a big problem in assembly using the instruction manual. Okay, this is an example of a, prob a big problem with the manual. The pictures are in uh, high contrast black and white. The unit is black and if you have a bracket like this and you're trying to show where to put it here, it's a black bracket on a black bracket background and you can't tell what the orientation is. And that's the same throughout the entire manual. If you look at this manual it's all very high contrast, very difficult to see, and sometimes you have to go to the exploded parts uh, diagram in the back, which does help out a little bit, but not much. It would have been better to see it here. The next problem had to do with the upper and lower supports. Before you flip this over upright, you're, allowed, you're supposed to connect these uh, support brackets or reinforcing brackets to the upper and lower supports, this here and this, and it straddles both of them to give it more support. Well, the problem is, you see how close it is to the filter. It's very difficult to get a wrench in here and uh, tighten that up. Uh, I was able to do it, but it had to be a it had to be a side wrench or a uh, a flat wrench, and uh, you couldn't use a ratchet. Um, so that was a problem right there. The next issue really took me a long time. If you notice on step ten here, it says to put that bracket in here, and then put two bolts through this uh, square bar and then into the bracket, and the bracket is uh, actually bolted into the side of the lower support. The problem with that is that if you looked at that, that picture, it shows that this bracket is not on there. Well, you've already put that bracket on there, so now you've got to go back and take the bracket off so you can fit that square tube reinforcing bar that goes right in here uh, in. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, I'm underneath the, the uh, unit, and you can see here this reinforcing bracket that I talked about before. That's shown not to be there um, in, the, in the instruction manual, but you had to put it on to reinforce the lower and the upper supports in order to flip this thing over. So now you got to take it off, put this bracket in right here, and then try to get it to put the bolts in. Well, you can put these bolts in, but if you put the bolts in with the head up here and the nut down here where it tells you to, you can't fit an, an inch and a quarter because there's, there's a, a, a bulkhead right here, right along here, that's stopping you from doing that. So you've got to mount it with the bolt head in the bottom and the nut at the top. There's no other way to do that. And that took some time to figure out. Um, this is, again, the support that holds the drum and uh, I spent a lot of time getting this bracket oriented right so it would work because I couldn't tell from the picture 
and again this is inch and a quarter bolts so you can't put them in the top because there's a as I said there's a bulkhead piece of metal right there so that was a big problem okay another issue is you see this this same uh, assembly that holds the the uh, drum there are some bolts right here and you can see that they're inch and a quarter well the, the manual says to use five five sixteenths bolts and there's no way five sixteenths bolts is going to fit from here through this bracket through this tube and out the other side uh, luckily they supply the right hardware but the manual is just wrong again okay the next thing are th these bosses that you see here um, let me see if we can get a good cup right here these bosses actually uh, grab the uh, drum and it says to use uh, quarter inch hex bolts to secure them well they supply it with flathead hex, uh, flathead bolts and hex bolts won't fit in there okay the next thing is these bolts here um, the picture shows the, the, the bolt head on the inside but the instructions say to put the bolt head on the outside so you have to play around with that and uh, I found out that uh, actually it belonged on the outside here these belong on the outside the, the, the heads of the bolts and, but it took some playing around to figure that out okay the next problem I had was the switch box here. It says to mount this switch box to the motor housing using quarter inch hex bolts. Well, the problem is the back of the switch box has very tiny holes for 12 or uh, 6 millimeter screws, metric screws. There's no way you can put a quarter inch bolt into the switch box. And then I found this plate that came packed with the unit, but no mention of it at all in the uh, instructions. So I finally figured out that the, the quarter inch bolts are not supposed to attach this. They're supposed to attach this plate to the motor housing. And then six millimeter metric screws are supposed to attach the switch box to the plate. And they don't mention that. And they also don't mention you've got to open up the switch box and put the screws in around the electronics in the back and screw into the self self-tapping uh, threaded holes in the switch in the uh, this actual plate. Nowhere is that mentioned anywhere. That was a problem. Okay next I want to talk about the drum. I left the drum out because uh, this was a real chore. Uh, there's these little six millimeter metric screws that connect the sides of the draw. It's an oct octagonal drum but it's made in pieces so this is one this is uh, one piece right here, there's one piece here, another piece here, and here. So there's a bunch of sections that you have to bolt together to make this octagonal drum. They did this so they could fit it in the package, right? And there's a total of 38 of these little tiny screws, and on the inside are acorn nuts. I don't know if you can see those, but they're acorn nuts right here. And you have to stick your hand in there and hope your arm is long enough to get to the other end uh, to connect all these sides together. Then the real challenge occurs when you got to connect the bottom to it because the bottom use the same, uses the same hardware. It uses the acorn nuts which you see here and the threaded screw. So you got to hold your hand on the inside with a long Phillips screwdriver to hold the head while you're tightening the acorn nuts on this side very difficult. There's 38 nuts here, there's another 10 or 12 nuts here and in the newer manual that I noticed the 2018 manual I talked about they use longer screws that come through here um, and I think it looks like it's bigger hardware too, not 6 millimeter and then you use regular nuts and then they tell you to put on the nut, the threads, these plastic caps to prevent injury when you put your hand in there. Well, I think that's only part of the problem. I think part of the, the issue is that, but the other part is that if you have these sharp threads in there, when you pull a plastic bag out, it rips it. A lot of people have complained about that. So that's one reason. The other thing that they did here on the bottom with the, uh, the wheels, they told you to put the uh, hex head, the head of the, uh, uh, of the bolt on this side, 
and put the nut on the, uh, on the other side, the inside. Well, I figured that would certainly rip the plastic bag, so I reversed them and put the head on the inside and the nut on the outside, and the wheels still, still turn okay. But this took a lot of time. This took a lot of time to put together. Uh, it should have been welded. There's no question this thing should have been welded, but they would have needed another box if they did that, and uh, they didn't want to do that. The strange thing is, after all of this, Another reason it should have been welded is you're, you're supposed to, uh, they give you a caulking compound and you're supposed to caulk all the seams all the way around and the bottom. So it's not apparently airtight enough without the caulking. So that's another issue. Now another problem I saw is this notice here, if you can read it. It says here, align the two weld lines of the top barrel to the lower cyclone. So that's this thing to this. And I'll show you where a weld is right here. This is a typical weld. I think what they want you to do is line that weld up with the bottom weld. I don't understand why that would make a difference. But my question is too, why couldn't they have done that at the factory? Um, I don't know why I, I, I should have to do it. So I gotta, really, I gotta understand why that's the case and I gotta call them and figure that out. I've written a uh, copy of these points to the uh, to the company. I talked to somebody in customer service and he said that he gets at least three calls a day on the poor instructions, but he's forwarded the the, um, the complaints to the manual department, the documentation group, and they have done nothing. So um, I basically wrote it up and told him I think somebody in the, in the documentation group ought to be fired. Here's another issue. The cord. It's not terminated in the plug. It's terminated in some ring terminals. Now, I don't know how many ring terminals uh, a plug has, but I haven't seen a plug with many terminals that a ring, a ring terminal could go on. So it means i got to cut them off and put, the, put a plug on it, because they couldn't bother to put a plug on it. So that's kind of it. Um, it took me, uh, like I said, I think it took me, I stopped counting after 10 hours of assembly time. It probably it will take over 15 to 20 hours. So I would recommend buying this only if you don't get frustrated easily. Um, again, this is not a performance review, but an assembly issue, and it's primarily documentation. The unit is built in Taiwan. I assume the, the I'm pretty sure the, the uh, instruction manual is also printed in, in Taiwan, but I don't think anybody at the company uh, tried to do a first article inspection on it or checked it out against a... Uh, uh, a real machine and, and saw where the errors are. Either that or they didn't care. But um, the other thing that I noticed is the wheels are pretty thin and flimsy for this size of machine. They're less than an inch wide and the sheet metal holding the wheels isn't all that thick either. Let me see if I can close in. Uh, they're three inch wheels. They're just not that robust. So you may want to put you know heavier wheels on this thing. Although it does seem adequate to move them around. Um, Except when I was wheeling it over here, it ran over a, uh, uh, a roofing nail, an aluminum roofing nail, and it couldn't make it over that. And I was wondering what the hell happened. And that's, that was because, you know, it, that was enough to stop it. A roofing nail is not that big. Um, so that's about it. If you uh, like this video, please subscribe and give me a like. Uh, if you've got any questions, um, I'll post it. I'm going to try to post all these points uh, in the comments section, too, for people to see the document. Okay, thanks, and uh, see you soon.